Today we need to replace engine driven pump which you can find on this CFM56-5B which belongs to Airbus A320 and during the process I'll try to explain uh, how it works, what is it good for and you will see how to replace it and I'm not gonna do it alone today I have apprentice with me that's her so let's take a look at it Okay, first we need to release the pressure from the tank. Yeah, that's a release valve. And you just put the rag over it, put the rag over it and turn it clockwise. And what we are actually doing, we are releasing pressure from the hydraulic fluid reservoir. And it has several reasons why it is pressurized. First one is prevent cavitation in the hydraulic pump. Second one is compensation of the altitude. Third, maintaining constant flow and supply. Fourth, allows monitoring and leak detection. This all is helpful during normal operation, but it has unwanted effect during the replacement of hydraulic components since it push hydraulic through the pipes and we don't want it. So that's why we need to release this pressure. Release the fire handle. So lift the guard, yeah, and push it out. Push, and it will jump out. That After that, we need to pull several pull CBs. Uh, with the with the fire lever, we basically cut all the all the fluid which can get inside of the engine. So if something will drain, no, and that that's right. But for replacement of the of the pump, mm -hmm. the all fluid or everything what can get in the engine or what we can get out of the pipes is from the fire valve mm -hmm. down. So nothing else from the pylon will get out. Okay. Huh? okay. Let's go, let's go to the EDP. So connector first. That's a bit. Oh. Cool. So let's start with our uh, drain, drain case. Ready? Yeah. And just to be more precise, now we are removing yeah, case flowing. drain line, which leads to the case drain filter. And as always, once we pull the hose yeah, out, true. we'll plug the both ends uh, with the plug, so we're not gonna have leak, and as well, we'll prevent ingression of unwanted material in the pump and, of course, in the line. And pull the union, please. Now we are pulling union yes. or reducer, which you can find between the hose and the pump itself. And on it we can find o-ring which we need to replace before we install it on the new pump. But we'll get to it during installation. Yep. As the next we remove pressure hose. Very good. It's okay. <laughs> Take position. And once again, once we pull the hose out of the union, we need to plug it to prevent yep. uh, fluid spillage. That's because of course, no one wants to work in an environment where you have a dripping hydraulic fluid. And we also pull the union from the pressure line. Now we can move to the yeah. suction hose and was... we'll proceed the same way. We'll okay. lose it, we will plug the hose Good. and of course we'll remove union. <laughs> Okay, so let's plug it so we don't have a leak. And when we do this, we will move everything out and we can lose four nuts. This looks nice. So we can put only the bucket, just in case. Here are all unions. That's it. You don't need to lose it completely, just uh, partially, then we rotate it. Yeah? So, and then of course we'll change the nuts, but sometimes it's easier to just pull it out. Mm -hmm. Because it's still, let's say, secured, so it will not gonna fall. So once it get out of the, of the structure, you can let it be, yes, yes. 
Now the one on top. Yes, it's it's it. That's it. Okay. And once we remove the pump, we will remove all four nuts because without that we cannot pull the gasket out and we need to install a new one, of course. Cool, so gasket out. We'll install the new one. Perfect. So, this is our new pump. Here you have an inlet, basically there you have a suction pump and this is the outlet which push the hydraulic fluid out and yeah, now we need to install all three unions, we will change the o-rings uh, then we need to install the o-ring as well on the drive shaft and yeah, then we will install it back on the engine Let's start, so let's start with the smaller one Yeah, okay, so back up ring first. And meanwhile, you see us preparing the new o rings on the unions for the new pump. Let me show you how the pump looks inside, and I'll try to also explain how it works. So let's take a look at it. And luckily, I was able to find on Google this picture, which perfectly represents what we have on a table. So let's start. Hydraulic fluid enters the pump from the reservoir here at the inlet port and the impeller begins to pressurize the fluid. Impeller is driven thanks to drive shaft and it permits pump full flow operation with an inlet pressure as low as 5 psig. And from impeller fluid flows into valve block area. Drive shaft, uh, powered by engine accessory gearbox, spin cylindrical block which contains multiple pistons. These pistons ride against the tiltable swash plate or yoke. The angle of the yoke determines how much stroke each piston makes, thus controlling the output flow. Now let's take a look how is this pump control. The compensator valve monitors system pressure. When demand decreases, it shifts the yoke towards neutral angle, reducing piston stroke and output. And when demand increases, the control pressure moves the yoke back to increase flow. This is how the pump self-regulates to maintain system pressure, which is on Airbus A320 3000 psi, and this fluid is then delivered to all components which uh, is on this hydraulic line. Link to video and a PDF you will find, of course, in the description of the video. I hope this simplified explanation was good enough, and now let's go back to our replacement. And here you can see our progress. Each union gets new o-ring or even backup ring. Then we place it on the pump. And once we have them all on the place, we'll torque the one which belongs to case drain filter because access on the engine is not the best and the torque value is not that high so we can hold it in the hands. And since preparations on the one end is done, we can remove protective cover which uh, prevent damage to the drive shaft and we can install new o-ring on the drive shaft. After that, we'll prepare the gasket and we are basically ready to install pump on the engine. And when you look at this pump ready to be installed, it's more than pressure and flow. Because understanding of aircraft hydraulic system isn't just technical, it's logical. And that's why I use Brilliant. It is an interactive learning app that helps you think like an engineer, solving problems step by step with the science and logic. Because if you ever looked at hydraulic schematic and you felt overwhelmed, brilliant scientific thinking and physics of everyday things, courses help you break complex system into the parts you can actually understand fast. No lectures, just interactive exercise where you test, apply and truly understand. Like learning how to pressure change across a valve or why check valve need a preload. 
So try it by yourself. Go to brilliant.org slash Zetor to try it for free for 30 days and as an extra you will get 20% off from annual subscription. Scan the QR code on the screen or later on click on the link in the description below and start building real understanding today. Big thanks Brilliant to sponsoring this video and we go back to our topic. Now we can place a gasket on the place and once it's there we can uh, bring our pump. <laughs> okay. One. Hmm. Yeah. And the last one. Cool. And turn. That's it. Cool. We can slightly tighten them one by one. Yeah, yeah. And when they are evenly tight, we can torque them one by one. Perfect. Cool. The last. Yes. And when pump is on the place, it's time for unions. Cool. Perfect. Now the connections, hydraulic Which means that we need to remove plugs and place hoses on the unions. And this can be sometimes a real struggle because there can be a little bit of tension or the hoses slightly turned and the nut just don't want to go on the union. And just remember, it need to always go easy by hand at least from beginning because if it doesn't go by hand it means that the nut is misaligned and if you use a wrench you can completely destroy the thread and then you have a bigger problem ah nice cool Perfect. Great. So since everything is torqued already, we can apply the torque seal. And we will do this on every connection. Yeah. And all the training is to install connector. So, and let's go here. Okay, it's it is there and it holds quite So perfect. We can test it. So this is our old pump. This is basically the drive shaft that this section is inserted inside of the gearbox. And yeah, through the gearbox it's driven and uh, it supply the hydraulic system with hydraulic fluid. So this pump is able to produce 3000 PSI. So we replace the engine driven pump on engine two and uh yeah this is yellow system displayed in a cockpit and on engine number one it is green system and uh, we don't have a backup in form of uh, electric pump like on boeing uh, in this case for transferring or supporting the other system we use the ptu and electric pump 
uh, we use only during ground operations when the engines are off. Uh, and uh, there is exception for the blue system because uh, blue system is powered only thanks to electric pump or in emergency case. And for that we use a uh, ram air turbine, but more about it in the next video. So we can switch on the airplane and prepare everything for test. Then we pressurize hydraulic reservoir, thanks to which we get positive pressure in the system. And thanks to that we will bleed the pump through removing of the hose from the case drain filter. And this pressure will push the air out. Once that's done, we will perform full cycle of the thrust reversers. And then we finally can perform the dry crank. And during this we will test if the pump gave us uh, 3000 psi. And as well, we will test if solenoid can switch it off and switch it on. And last final test is a test of the fire shutoff valve. During this procedure, we motor the engine. I release the valve and it starts to make a quite huge noise. That's normal. During this procedure, my colleague behind me measured the value on the CV and this value must be really correct, otherwise we need to replace the fire handle. During this test I need to get a warning with a low pressure and once this is done we can push the fire handle back. The noise stop because pressure can be delivered to airplane systems and this will resume normal operation of the pump. And since everything was correct we can switch off the starter and now it's time to service the hydraulic system. Leak check has been performed, uh, hydraulic was serviced, there is no uh, low pressure on the side, we inflate it as well. Uh, uh, for us, uh, what's remaining is the paperwork. Okay, that's all about engine hydraulic pump. If you have questions, you know what to do, write your questions in the comments below. As always, I would like to ask you to don't use this as a replacement for a maintenance manual but always use latest documentation released by manufacturer. Uh, big thanks to Austrian Airlines that they let me record all these videos for you. Uh, thank you each and everybody for watching and especially to members. That's all from my side. My name is Tomasz, this was Aircraft Maintenance with Zeto and I will see you on next video. Bye.